time to present Scott Dupont to bring you another episode of Finance Your Movie with tips and strategies to help you get your money to tell your story. It's time! Okay, thanks to Bruce Buffer once again for that incredible incredible voiceover intro. You know the sound. You know the sound of his voice. Today, we have an absolutely jam-packed show. Um, we've got David A. Lockhart with us. He's an actor, producer, writer, Emmy Award winner, martial arts, Hall of Fame. He's a rock and roller toured all <laughs> over the world. Uh, open up some, for some incredible bands. He's a theater owner. You might see behind him uh, his latest movie theater purchase. And uh, last but not least, he's an entrepreneur, a uh, man of many hats. He's got a hat on himself right now. <laughs> and uh, this is actually the first live episode we've been doing kind of outside on a location. Normally, you oh. know, I'm, I'm in somebody's podcast or somebody's right. office. So uh, welcome, David. Welcome. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, and um, I'm glad to be able to be a part of this, your community and help and support however I can. And, and then also get some help and support <laughs> however I can. So yeah, thank you for bringing us together and we'll connect some dots. Well, you, you said something interesting right there, like, uh, we're we're all still learning. We're all still connecting. Yeah. We can always make more relationships, uh, learn, share. So yeah, that's what it's all about. Um, I want to talk to you about your theater in a few minutes, but I want to kind of start out chronologically because um, that's that's the most interesting to see a film producer's progression, how your incredible career really all started, especially in in um, behind the camera. Um, you started out producing a few short films, and then it looks like you did this um, a video, Yoga Can Balance Your Life with Julia oh, yeah. Rubio. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, now was, um, that a, was that a project that you, you kind of put together and, and you knew you could monetize or you kind of saw a market or maybe you could help people with their health? Um, that was like my first introduction. That wasn't quite at the beginning. I'd already done um, Internet Tonight. I, I used to work for um, uh, well, Tech TV. So that was my first job right out of college was Tech TV. So I've been working there for about five years. So I, I had a lot of ex five-year experience boot camp at Tech TV. And one of the shows was called Internet Tonight. Uh, where they didn't, I was the sports correspondent and uh, segment producer. It would cover things about uh, um, things that weren't sporting events that were not covered on TV, but had a big internet presence. So I was, so that was my uh, doctrine into the world of uh, just like extreme conditions of just working. You know, I wasn't used to it. I was like, I went to Chico State where, you know, I got to take a nap in between classes and <laughs> I've heard and stories swimming. about Chico State. Yeah, yeah. So the my real college was Tech TV. Like that was my real like I did one year at CNET, four years at Tech TV, and you know, at first, you know, working twelve hours minimum wage, like learning everything, like from lights to uh, how to best way to haul equipment, <laughs> heavy equipment uh, across the room you know, wrangling wires, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, at CNET, we always made fun of that. Uh, most most um, sets, they, they, they look heavy, but they're really light. Our set looked light, but was extremely heavy. It was like made of the heaviest <laughs> stuff you can imagine. So by the time, so the yoga. So uh, by the time I got to the yoga, that was like five, about five years of doing that. And I... Um, I left that company um, because I, I just needed to uh, 
get out more. They, I mean, I could get, I don't know how deep you want to get in that. We could cross back there later. There's some interesting stories why I left there, tech TV. But um, if you want to go back of like my spiritual journey of why I left. But so then I was, uh, I had met Julie Rubio um, in a play. So I was like, I'm, I don't want to produce anymore. I don't want to, I was doing it. I was on a show about video games at that time. And that was around the time. Uh, I'll get into it even though I said I wouldn't. But that was around the time of uh, uh, the Iraqi war. And there's lots of violence going on. And the video games were sort of violent. Yeah, just, yeah. It was two, the days, I mean, I'm, I'm a red-blooded American. I like my action films. And I, you know, obviously I still do them. But like just day in and day out of like, in an editing room with video games. Anyway, so I quit. There's more to that story, but I, I quit. And um, so then I, I joined this uh, traveling lantern uh, theater company. Just so me and this uh, woman, Miranda, she, I think she was like probably like 19 at the time. We're still good friends, but her and I were in a white van and traveled across uh, the country with a traveling lantern theater company and went to a school that didn't have um, uh, theater. Uh, they're, they're impoverished schools that didn't have theater. So um, they, they got grants from the government for us to go and do a two person show um, all across the Southwest. So we would be in like Navajo Indian reservations and or oh, cool, like cool. sort of the, the slums and do this two person show. And we didn't know, that was still before, you know, smartphones and Google. So we had like a, we didn't know where we're going, really. We just knew where we're going, what day we're supposed to be there. And we didn't know if it was a middle school, a gymnasium of a thousand kids, or a cafeteria <laughs> in the back room with 20 kindergartners, or the gymnasium with a thousand middle schoolers. Like, we didn't know until we got there. So, it, and as you can imagine, it would be extreme, uh, uh, shows of feeding kindergartners to a thousand <laughs> middle schoolers. You, you, the different uh, vibe. But at the end of each show, everyone loved us. It was amazing. Like the and that, that had a lot to do with the writing. But we had a little. We had like a. We had a van and we we put out a little uh, roll out backdrop and then we'd do like our little show. We had two shows: one Peter Pan and one World Mythology. But anyway, so that's how I, I was doing plays when I ran into Julie Rubio, and the Starlight Players in Orinda, and I would and I did a play, um, and then I had never even knew anything about yoga, I d I just thought it was stretching. I didn't know the spiritual aspect of it, and that was really her idea. And uh, I said, yeah, I was like, I could help you. She's like, I always want to do this yoga video, and I and I said, well, I know, I can make it. And you could have it. I'll just make it for you. Was, so, was, was uh, there any uh, money money involved? Like, did you have a, a small budget, or did you just kind of bootstrap the whole thing? Um, I yeah, I just used connections. I so from a tech TV and CNET, I knew the people. They let me use their camera. They let me use their uh, jib. Uh, and then um, the I uh, got it in like two or three days. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was in. So we just a couple of people just flew out. I just asked them, like, "Hey, you get you want to be help with this video? You get um, <clears throat> free airfare and a place to stay in Hawaii." They're oh like, wow! They're like, "All right." And so um, yeah, we all like crashed. We all like rented this real cheap house, uh, North Shore, and uh, stayed there. And uh, we used the camera and the jib from CNET. And we all worked for free, and uh, and then and, did uh, you um, did you finally market that video? Did it did it make a little bit of money back? I think it like broke even, kind okay. of thing. Okay. To tell you the truth, I don't even know. Like I sort of gave it, I sort of like <laughs> gifted it away, really. Um, and then and then like Ju Julie sort of put it went around and put it in stores. Oh, the location. I was just walking around in North Shore and I saw that location. I just knocked on their door. I said, hey, I, we're filming a yoga video. Can we use that, your deck? It's a beautiful deck overlooking the ocean. It was like a, already like a, 
it's like you couldn't pay for that really it was like perfect and then they just gave it they're like okay yeah sure Pro- producing producing 101 yeah if you don't ask you yeah. won't get i just not literally lot knock on the door i can't remember if they got anything Maybe wow. we gave them some A little, little bit trickier in L.A. or Malibu, but... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Congrats yeah. on that. Well, that's the other thing, too. Like, you leave... Like, for example, like, up here... So, right now, I mean, if this is, like... We're, I'm in, like, the Redwoods, basically. Just so that... So, you saw the theater, but this is, like... There's a beautiful bridge over here, I think. I can speak well. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um... Yeah, so this is uh, this is Monterio. But anyways, uh, so yeah. I want to I want to jump forward. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. Little, Otherwise, uh, this interview might take five years. In yeah. itself. <laughs> um, but what what might be most interesting to our audience, you know, they're aspiring filmmakers. They're just out of film school or maybe they're getting ready to do their second feature or their first major budget documentary you know something i'm not talking about ten thousand dollars in kickstarter so they need some real money so i want to look at some of your films like um maybe the assassin or jump forward to playing with dolls what what was one of the first indie films that you produced where you were either raising the money or someone involved with putting it together in terms of the financing um and well we could go with my film. Okay, the first film I did where there was sort of money involved was uh, Dead in the Den, where I play a cowboy um, fighting zombies. That was the first one where, I mean, even, I mean, we're still talking very low budget. All those things to do to try to get freebies, like knocking on doors. So, so, so the ca- would you say the cash budget was uh, under 50K, under 100K? It was it was between fifty and a hundred. Oh, okay, 50. okay. So yeah, yeah between, pretty low budget for a feature. Yeah, but again, went out of L.A., went to a place called Jamestown, and the whole town sort of came. The, all the town came up, acted, uh, little I think for free to be zombies, um, and uh, there's you know it's it's the country, so there's horses and western towns, and I think they got a real good deal on that. But that's when I. That's when I decided I could do it too, because before I was just in TV. Like I worked for you know a uh-huh. company, and I did a yoga like a yoga video and short films and things. But I remember they asked me, they're like, "Do you want?" I was just an actor in that one. Like, "Do you want cash, or do you want equity?" I was like, "Oh, cash." I was like, "I was like, I didn't even think you could make money off an indie film." I and I wish I took the equity on that one because that one ended up like it. Red box and all these things. Oh wow, wow. Um, and that it sort of so. And then I was like, okay, let me make my own. And so that's when I did like the Lockhart film. I was like, I could make, I bet I can okay. make a film as at least as good as the Dead in the Dam. I mean, fast forward. Uh, well, no. That yeah, no. Let 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 let's get in, let's get into to Lockhart. You you have a uh, the first one was Unleashing the the ta- Talisman. It's a trilogy. Um, yeah. And it, explain just really really briefly why that subject matter was of interest to you. I mean, it's like your ancestors, right? Right. And again, I didn't know, I didn't know much about my history. I didn't know much about anything about my history until someone started asking me a question about where I was from. And I was like, let me find, and this is, you know, a year before I made the movie, um, around 2013, 14, around there. So then I, um, I uh so you kind of you kind of had an interesting reason why you wanted to make the film. I mean there's like this right. Scottish fil- this history of your family. Yeah. So I um how did it, how did I go about? It was basically it had to do with the crusades and Scotland and I felt really connected cuz I didn't cuz I think it's important for everybody to sort of look into their to find out where they came from. I think it helps especially you learn in about this country yourself. full of immigrants. We we all yeah. came here from, you know, ninety five percent of us came from some other country. Yeah, and 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 I think just growing up, it was just you no, you it's sort of like I don't know, I don't know if it was just maybe as a country it was like more of a melt it was more of like to be a melting pot and not really find out where you're from. I, I don't know. That was my sort of gr- growing up. Um 
But then I, um, so you had to come up with money for this film. So yeah, yeah. So that one actually a friend, I'm gonna go into my car so I can plug in. My friend, I had another movie where I was, um, I went to Thailand. It was about an actor who goes to Thailand and, and uh, um, there's human trafficking. Uh, so he, he goes to Thailand to make a movie and he finds out the producers are involved in human trafficking and becomes a real hero and he saves the day. So I wrote the script and I really went to Thailand uh, to, to do research and found this woman who really saves kids and all this amazing stuff. But that, um, so I was trying to raise money for that for about a year. And then finally I had a friend just came to me. He's like, hey, I have the money for your movie. And I said, oh, wow, that's amazing. And then he told me how much he had, which was like around 50. And he so just, not bad for one single investor. No, no. And I was like, well, I don't know if I can make that Thailand movie for that much. Um, but I have another idea for a film that um, takes place in America. And because and, I was just learning about my... Uh, I was just learning about the other, the Lockhart one. I was just doing research about the Lockhart one. I was like, yeah, we could do that one where a guy finds uh, his, his, uh, he finds a healing stone buried under his grandfather's golf course, and on it is an algorithm that could provide the world with free and limited energy. And the powers that be don't want this information to come out. So he, he has to find out what it is, what, where the stone came from, what he's supposed to do with it, and the bad guys are after him. They want to stop it, you know. So that was the idea of this one. Just as crazy to do, really, as a Thailand film because <laughs> it's such a big idea, big budget kind of Travel, situation. Yeah. Um, but I, I said, okay, let's, yeah, I have this idea. He's like, okay. So I, I wrote out the treatment and just I wrote it out, actually up here on on the Russian River. I, uh, um, I have a cabin up here. That's how I ended up being up here with this Monterio Theater and all that kind of stuff. I have a family cabin, so I've been coming up here since I was a little kid. And, my parents still have this cabin, you know, rustic cabin. So I wrote it in like a week or two. And then um, I wrote it pretty quick because we wanted the film before it started getting, before the rains came. Because we wanted to, oh, also my wife was pregnant. I was like, I need a, <laughs> we need to make this movie. Yeah, it all happened at the same time. We need to make this movie before the rains come. Because if the rains come, then we need to, then we'll wait. And my son will be born and it'll be hard, you know, and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... We I rushed it pretty quick, and like then we got uh, we got a couple more people since we got that initial fifty. Uh, let let, let me dive in. A, let me yeah. let me dive in a little bit deeper here. Since sure. this was kind of a a story about Scotland, your family history. Did did any of the people you reached out to happen to be family members or be Scottish or just history buffs? I mean, who who were these uh, kinds of people that you got to throw in some money um really just family and friends because they know i mean they know i've been working they just see me working they just see me for years doing this kind of stuff you know working like i'm relentless like i just because i like to do it like it's really yeah. fun for me i mean it's challenging and hard and all those other things too but i really like community i like and there's so much that needs to, like my hat hat goes off to anyone who finishes a movie no matter what you know crossing that finish line is is no joke you know you got so many things that uh need to happen and bringing so many different people together that that it's always like seems like a mini miracle when it when it actually goes on to the big screen and that's why i actually want this movie theater too like that was like this is like the final step like to showcase people's film like that's why it feels missing with the um everything online and on, on you know um yeah it doesn't it's feel, different yeah there's, not, there's nothing finished. like go, going into a movie theater and seeing it yeah. with an audience it needs to be it needs to go through the final stage for it to be finally a movie in my opinion like if a movie's finished but just is on a laptop or sitting in the yeah. editing room or whatever it's like no this is like this is the finish line so in a sense i want to help people <laughs> get to the finish line that was one of the reasons why i wanted it to 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 purchase this and and retain this and keep it going um 
And it's going to be, again, this is going to be like a movie. This is going to be uh, a community. Everyone's going to have to come together really to, to keep this going and preserve this. You know, it, it can't, uh, there's no way I can do it alone. But I have, also, I have an amazing team already with me. But it's going to take more amazing people to just sort of just keep this energy going, you know. Um, well, con- congratulations on um, just getting your own movie theater. That's, that's pretty, pretty freaking cool. If you have yeah. um, a few minutes, uh, I want to sure. hold you over the break. I've got a few more yeah. questions, and then we're going to really uh, dive into what's next on the movie theater. Hang on just a minute. We'll be right back. 